we will look at depression in more detail. The biological explanation of depression suggests that depression is caused by an imbalance of certain chemicals in the brain, specifically neurotransmitters such as serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. These neurotransmitters are involved in regulating mood, motivation, and other important functions. Low levels of serotonin have been linked to depression. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter and it regulates your mood, appetite and sleep, among other functions. It is believed that in people with depression, there is a deficiency of serotonin in certain parts of the brain, leading to the symptoms of depression. Research has also found that other biological factors can contribute to depression, such as your genetics and hormones. Studies have shown that depression can run in families, suggesting a genetic component. Additionally, hormonal changes, such as those that occur during menopause or after childbirth, can trigger depression in some people. Overall, the biological explanation suggests that depression is largely influenced by genetic and other biological factors, rather than environmental or psychological factors. However, it is important to note that depression is a complex disorder and is likely influenced by a combination of biological, environmental and psychological factors. The psychological explanation of depression emphasises the role of nurture or environmental factors in the development of depression. According to this perspective, negative schemas or patterns of thinking can influence an individual's perception of themselves, others and the world, leading to negative attributions and beliefs about themselves and their experiences. These negative patterns of thinking can contribute to the development and maintenance of depression. For example, a person with a negative schema about themselves may interpret a small mistake as evidence that they are worthless or incompetent, leading to feelings of low self-esteem and hopelessness. Additionally, individuals who have experienced adverse life events, such as trauma or loss, may be more susceptible to developing negative schemas and attributions, which can increase their risk for depression. Psychological treatments for depression, such as cognitive behavioural therapy, aim to identify and modify negative schemas and attributions and teach individuals more adaptive coping strategies. Antidepressant medications are used in the treatment of depression. They work by altering the levels of neurotransmitters in the brain, such as serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. Antidepressants are often prescribed for moderate to severe depression, as well as for other mental health conditions, such as anxiety disorders, obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD, and post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. There are different types of antidepressants, including selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs, serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, SNRIs, tricyclic antidepressants, TCAs, and monoamine oxidase inhibitors, MAOIs. SSRIs and SNRIs are more commonly prescribed due to their relatively fewer side effects compared to TCAs and MAOIs. Antidepressants are not a cure for depression, but they can help alleviate symptoms such as sadness, hopelessness and a lack of energy. It can take several weeks for the medication to take effect and it is important to continue taking the medication as prescribed by a doctor, even if symptoms improve. In addition, Therapy and lifestyle changes, such as exercise and healthy eating, may also be recommended as part of a comprehensive treatment plan.
Cognitive Behaviour Therapy, CBT, is a type of talking therapy that focuses on identifying and changing negative thought patterns and behaviours that contribute to mental health problems, such as depression and anxiety. CBT is based on the idea that how we think about situations and events can affect how we feel and behave. In CBT, a therapist works with a client to identify negative thought patterns, such as negative self-talk or automatic negative thoughts, and to challenge and replace them with more positive and realistic thoughts. The therapist may also help the client develop coping strategies and problem-solving skills to deal with difficult situations and stressors. CBT is a structured and goal-oriented therapy that typically involves a set number of sessions. It has been found to be an effective treatment for a range of mental health problems, including depression, anxiety, and post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. It can be delivered one-on-one, -on -one, in a group setting, or through online programs. From a reductionist perspective, Antidepressant medications and CBT target specific biological or psychological factors that are thought to cause depression. These interventions can be effective at reducing symptoms and helping individuals recover from depression. From a holistic perspective, however, depression is seen as a complex and multifaceted condition that is influenced by a variety of factors including genetics, environment, and social and cultural factors. In this view, treatment should address not only the symptoms of depression, but also the underlying causes and contributors to the condition. Case study 13. Wiles's study of effectiveness of CBT. The aim. Wiles wanted to investigate to see if treatment resistant patients improve when given a combination of antidepressants plus CBT. The method. The study used 469 participants from Bristol, Exeter and Glasgow belonging to 73 GP practices. They had all been taking antidepressant medication for more than six weeks and still show signs of clinical depression. Patients are randomly assigned to usual care or usual care plus CBT. Improvement was measured on symptoms of depression using the BDI. The results. At the end of the six months, 422, that's 90% of participants, remained in the study. For usual care, 21.6% had more than a 50% reduction in symptoms. For usual care plus CBT, 46.1% had more than a 50% reduction in symptoms. Conclusions The study found that CBT was significantly more effective than usual care or placebo in reducing symptoms of depression. However, the study also found that CBT was not significantly more effective than other psychological treatments for depression. These findings suggest that CBT may be an effective treatment for depression, but it may not be superior to other psychological treatments. It all suggests that the benefits of treatment can be maintained for over 12 months. This is a well-designed study with carefully controlled extraneous variables. A weakness is the use of self-report methods to determine the levels of depression. This can be quite difficult to assess, but when using self-report methods, it may not be very valid, as people's mood may vary dependent on how they felt at that exact moment. Observations may be better, but would also be impractical. A strength of this research is that it is an effective therapy, which can be used to help to treat people 